Ladies and gentlemen, uh, may I say good evening and thank you for all coming to the exhibition. This is our first mixed exhibition for the Greenway Artists Initiative. Um, before I introduce Catherine, who is going to do the formal opening, I'd just like to say a big thank you to our only client hotel for all the work they do for us and all the support they give us in this exhibition. And also, I'd just like to thank people like Michael and Neil who helped put up the exhibition and the other exhibitions, and everyone who's sort of helped and done bits and pieces. And uh, the other thing I would just say before is for the people who are involved in the initiative, Will you put some work on the Facebook as well, on the Greenway page? Because it would be nice if we could have more work on the Facebook page of the Greenway. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Catherine Martin, uh, who will perform in the opening exhibition. Um, sorry, I look at some of so you looked at me. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yes, I'd probably like to. Margaret. It happens to me all the time, actually. Um, okay, my name is Catherine Marshall, and I was asked by Mike McLaughlin, who's one of the artists in this group, if I would open this because Mike had come across me in another context and thought, I think we would do I think. <laughs> I work at the Irish Museum of Modern Art normally, and I'm the head of collections there normally. At the moment, though, and for the last couple of years, I've been on secondment to another project which seems to be taking up an inordinate amount of time. So I operate out of two completely different places. More of the Royal Irish Academy at the moment than the Irish Museum of Modern Art. But both of those are national institutions. And what struck me since coming here this evening is that maybe five people who've spoken to me said, thank you very much for coming all the way to Mayo and all the way out to Morani. And I think, I'm not, well, thank you all of you who said that, because it's very nice to be thankful for doing anything. But the truth is, that if you work for a national cultural institution, we shouldn't have to be thanked for being where we should be, which is all over the country, wherever the things that concern us are happening. And what's happening with this project in Morani is as important as anything that's happening in Temple Bar, or, you know, Kildare Street, or um, Kilmainham, or anywhere else in the country. And I say that coming from an institution, coming from Inma, which, when it moved out to um, Kilmainham, when it was established in Kilmainham in Dublin in 1991, and not in Kildare Street, was criticised by um, the, the, um, the editor of the Irish Arts Review at the time, who had just retired from being director of the National Gallery of Ireland. He criticised Emma's home in the Royal Hospital at Kilmainham on the grounds that it was outside the cultural heartland. All right? Now, get a load of that. The cultural heartland, if Emma was outside, and Emma's only just under two miles from the city centre, okay? Where do you think my rent belongs? <laughs> out of the sticks. Um, however, some of us were born in the sticks. I certainly was. Um, or at least I wasn't born in Moranny, but I was born in rural Ireland. And so were most other people in Ireland, actually. Back, you know, the population of Dublin now um, it, you know, occupies a size of a bit of the population of Ireland, but it's nowhere near half of it. And even then, most of the people who make it up are still first-generation people from the country who just happened to be there. And quite a number of them would love to get back out again if they had the choice. So, you know, to talk about culture in heartlands and behave as if culture belongs in one place rather than in, in another is actually rubbish, and we need to challenge it every chance we get. So that's the politics out of the way, not part of politics, just politics. But I suppose there's another bit of politics. I didn't know what I was going to say about this exhibition as I was coming down here today because... I did know the I know the work and the names of some of the artists here. I've come across Tony's work before, come across Jerry Sweeney's work before. I hadn't come across Mike's work before, but um, but I was aware of the kind of work that he did, and now I'm delighted to have seen it. And I've seen some other work from here by some of you in contexts that you won't even know about because it was shown by other curators past work around to each other. 
and that's very important as well. So, in fact, that's a reason why it is important to get people out of um, the metropolis and into the other places that they go to, um, because we're all part of one collective and we all feed whatever is going on in it, and we have to keep on doing that. Otherwise, the so-called centre of cultural activity in the city will dry up anyway if it isn't fed from out here. Just as I think it's good that people from there come here occasionally and, you know, maybe bring a different kind of vision temporarily into here, but it's not a vision that's, you know, in any way superior to anything that's happening here. Far from it. You know, all of these things are just another way of looking at things. Let's, let's be clear about that. I suppose that when I was coming along here today, what I was thinking I might say a few words about, and just a very brief few words about, is just how important art is and creativity is all the time, in all, you know, all through society and in every, you know, um, every sort of up and down that society goes through. So we've had a Celtic tiger. And a certain kind of art got a big press during the Celtic tiger. Art that had a huge um, price tag beside it. So there were people going into galleries and asking how much did something cost. And if it cost more than a certain amount, <coughs> they said, I'll have it. If it cost less than that, they weren't interested. Not because the art itself was any different, but because it was all about some kind of commodity value. And of course that it demeans the artwork, it demeans the artist, totally. It just puts price tag on us that is a spurious thing and, you know, it really acts as a smokescreen between the viewer and the artwork. So it's to anybody. So there was that kind of thing and now there's the opposite. There's the recession when um, nobody seems to have money for anything. And oddly enough, I notice politicians pay much more attention to um, artists and creativity now than they did a couple of years ago. Suddenly now they're saying things like, we must look to the arts. Well, isn't that heartening? They never looked to the arts when, um, you know, when they were feeling all right in their ivory towers. But now, when they're in trouble, look to the arts. And you know, the great thing is that the arts is there. The arts was there before, it didn't go away, it stays there. Because the arts is so important to the people who make it and to the people close to them who see it. And the person I think, actually the person who's written best about this is Karl Marx, who didn't know very much about the visual art. But he knew about mankind and he said what makes man different to other animals is that man is a species being and the thing that defines man is that he can produce more than he needs for his own survival. Animals just, you know, um, they collect the food they need and then they eat it and then they collect more and they eat that and they, you know, have balance and so on. But that's what they do. Man, more, you know, collects the food, eats it, um, has a family, and we're talking about the women as well as men here, by the way, and then over and above in their spare time, they look for things that define them as individuals. That's what makes us special. And that's where we show our creativity. Now, not everybody goes to art college, not everybody makes art that gets shown in contexts like this exhibition. It might be that your garden is your art form, or it might even be that, you know, the way you put on your makeup is your art form. I don't wear makeup because I don't know how to do it. I would if I could. <laughs> um, and I would make art if I could. Um, we, but we're all trying in our individual ways, I think, every single day to express ourselves as individuals. And that's where we show our creativity. It's where we need artists most of all to give us a lead. And in a project like this one, what I loved about everything that Mike McLaughlin told me just to lure me down here was the fact that it embraces not just visual artists, but people from the local community who, are, who see the importance of um, a communal project. It's not just about the, um, the artists who are already, if you like, established names. It's about all the people who make art in the community. It's not about the ones who um, you know you can sell easily. It's an open 
invitation to everybody who makes art in the in this area to um, submit a couple of works for consideration for a group exhibition like this. So everybody gets in this piece. It's not about any kind of hierarchy at all. It is about affirming that creative instinct in all of the people who make art. And then, of course, having made it and shown it in here, perhaps sold some, perhaps not, and that's not the most important thing, although I hope some people do buy it and I hope some of the work sells. But on top of all of that, they've got a really interesting um, program of, of things that they plan to do by way of community projects with children, with the environment, with the greenway itself, um, things that lock the individuality of the artists in this area, the, if you like, Marxist thing that picks us out as special, to a further extension of it, what makes us what makes the artists in this area special for being in this area. So the Greenway is a focal point for all of that. And um, I suppose I'm really heartened to see that um, this initiative is being supported by Western Tourism and that Western Tourism wasn't, didn't stick around to make a speech saying this is about bringing tourists to the area or anything like that. Instead, Brian Quinn, who was here earlier on and whom I spoke to, seemed much more interested in the creative potential for everybody. So maybe it doesn't bring a single extra tourist this year. Maybe it brings a dozen. It doesn't really matter. It's more about development here, personal development for everybody who engages with it. So last weekend, and I'm going to finish in a second, last weekend I was, um, I was in a, a little village off the west coast of Kerry, on the Diggle Peninsula, I was in Doon, Queens, where they had a conference um, to do with art and the Blasket Islands, and not just the Blasket Islands, but other islands off the west coast of Ireland and Scotland. And one of the focal points for that was the work of the artist Maria Simmons Gooding. What was interesting about Maria Simmons Gooding was that she came to Dingle in 1968. She didn't know what kind of art she was going to make. She hadn't found herself at all at that stage. She was then, you know, in her 20s, um, really looking for a direction in her life. And the minute she arrived in that place, she knew that somehow that place would inform her for the rest of her life. So although she's traveled all over the world and made art in the Himalayas and in Sinai and in Mali and in, you know, Bhutan and God knows where, really, it's all the art. It's always from Jingle in some way. Um, and what was most exciting of all then was to find that somebody like Maria Simmons Bully <coughs> would be picked up in the 70s by a gallery in New York, which was the gallery that showed Jackson Pollock and Mark Rothko and, you know, those big names in the history of 20th century art. And that happened without her really going outside of a few fields around a town's land in West Kerry. I think if it can happen there, it can happen anywhere. And as I was thinking earlier on, you know, Mayo is the county that gave us all enough airports when people thought, what a stupid dream that is. <laughs> and yet, it's there and it's functioning and it looks like as if it has a future of another airport closing down. So, you know, recessions are all about time to dream and the artists dream better than the rest. So congratulations everybody on the work we got here. I can't single out anybody. It'll be pointless because there's 28 different artists. I didn't even see all the work until I arrived here this evening. So I think just congratulations to all of you for being part of this. It's a terrific thing that you're doing. I hope that you get Mike or somebody to keep me posted on what you're doing over the next couple of years and how it's going. I have lots of ideas too if you ever want to bounce a few ideas around. But congratulations on what you've already achieved and what you plan to do. Well done.